We've seen by looking at nature on the subatomic scale that the structures of matter and energy and even the nature of the fundamental forces thought to govern their behavior throughout the universe would have been simpler under conditions of extremely high energy. And we've seen by looking at nature on the large scale, out in the expanding universe of galaxies, that the universe began in just such a state of high energy. By putting these two lines of inquiry together, scientists have been able to trace the broad outlines of cosmic history from the first fraction of a second of the Big Bang down to the present day. We don't know all the details of this story by any means, of course. Parts of it are missing. Much of what's been surmised is doubtless distorted or simply wrong. But even at this early stage, it's possible to discern the grandeur and beauty and the extraordinary explanatory power of what is, after all, the ultimate history story, the history of the universe. The story of how a single kernel of energy could have become everything that there is. To examine the scientific account of Genesis and evolution in detail, suppose that the steps uh, leading up the tower of this old lighthouse could carry us backward into cosmic history, so we could scrutinize every thread in the long tapestry of time. Let's imagine that each of the windows in the lighthouse looked out on an earlier epoch in cosmic history. So that this first window let us see the way the universe looked when it was only one billion years old. And that each step of the stairway from there on took us back to when the universe was one-tenth its previous age, to only a hundred million years after the Big Bang, then ten million, one million, and so forth. Walking in this way, we very soon would have reached the first second of time. And that's important because a lot happened during that first second. Our galaxy and pretty much all the other galaxies, so far as we can tell, formed during the first billion years of the expansion of the universe, when the primordial gas was still thick enough to congeal readily into stars and galaxies. We don't know all the specifics of how the galaxies formed by any means, we think we have a pretty good picture of what the young Milky Way might have looked like. Here it is. These first generation stars were composed almost entirely of hydrogen and helium. If there was any intelligent life in the early days of the universe, the periodic table up at the front of the high school chemistry class would have had just two squares in it, hydrogen and helium. Once the universe had been expanding for about one million years, it had thinned out enough so that photons could fly freely through space without constantly running into other particles. The result was the dawn of light. This was also the date of the birth of the first atoms. Free at last from harassment by the photons, electrons could settle down in orbit around atomic nuclei. One electron orbiting one proton gives you an atom of hydrogen, the simplest and most abundant of all the elements. Two electrons orbiting a pair of protons plus a couple of neutrons gives you a tidy little atom of helium. But those helium nuclei were already on hand. They must have formed at an even earlier epoch. The creation of helium nuclei dates from when the universe was about 100 seconds old. That's the first point at which things had cooled off enough so that protons and neutrons could get together and form nuclei of atoms without constantly being torn asunder again in the all-pervasive heat. Now, for the first time, protons and neutrons are able to cling together thanks to the strong force. They tend to form triplets, and the triplets combine to make an unstable nucleus. Two of the extra protons are thrown off, and the result is a stable nucleus of helium. This elaborate mating ritual seems to have been pretty popular in the early days. So popular that the theorists calculate that about one quarter of all the stuff in the universe should have congealed into helium gas. And sure enough, when astronomers study the chemical composition of the universe at large today, they find that it's about one quarter helium. It's this sort of confirmation of theory by experiment that leads scientists to think that they really do understand something of how helium atoms formed in the fires of the Big Bang. 
We're climbing now into very early times. When the universe was one second old, the heat was so intense that it overwhelmed even the strong nuclear force. That's the force that holds quarks together to make protons and neutrons. From here on up, even such fundamental structures as protons and neutrons can't exist. The universe is a soup of free quarks. A tenth of a second, a hundredth of a second after the beginning of time, the universe now is so dense that even neutrinos, subatomic particles so aloof that they can normally fly through a trillion mile block of solid lead without hitting anything, even neutrinos are now bound up in the universal broth of matter and energy. One ten billionth of a second after the beginning. The heat was sufficiently intense that the electromagnetic and weak forces were still welded together and functioned as a single unified force, the electroweak force. Z particles could be created in abundance out of the heat of the electroweak epoch. Weak bosons and photons acted interchangeably, and the universe was ruled not by four forces, but by three. The universe was just a tiny fraction of a second old, about 10 to the minus 35th of a second to be exact. It's thought that the electroweak force had not yet diverged from the strong force. For one brief shining moment, the natural simplicity envisioned by the grand unified theories was reality. Exotic X particles and free quarks sailed the subnuclear seas. Gluons, photons, and weak bosons danced interchangeably. So only two forces were operating in the extremely early universe, gravitation and this electronuclear or grand unified force, as it's called. Yet it's possible that even earlier in the history of the universe, things were even simpler. We've reached the first instant of time. The fraction of a second that has elapsed since the universe began to expand is so small that it has no name. To express it, you'd have to write a decimal point and then a string of 40 some odd zeros. The universe, everything that there is or can be, was contained, we think, at this point within a single spark of energy, rapidly expanding, but still smaller than the nucleus of an atom, and ruled by a single primordial law. If we knew what went on at this epoch, we might finally understand the relationship between the laws of nature and between space and time and matter and energy. But we don't yet know. We lack a theory that can explain how nature would have behaved under these extreme circumstances. A lot of people are looking for such a theory. Some think it'll be a kind of quantum gravity or what's called a super unified theory or a super symmetry theory. And of course, we don't know what the theory will say. But whoever hits upon that theory will be the first to have glimpsed the very threshold of creation.